groups of two variables. We'll begin by discussing critical points for functions of two variables, and then we're going to discuss the second derivative test for functions of two variables. Let f be a function of two variables, x and y. a, b is a point in the x, y plane. And let's suppose the partial derivative of f with respect to x at a, b is equal to the partial derivative of f with respect to y at a, b. And they're both equal to zero. Then this point a, b is called a critical point of the function f. To determine the critical points of this function of two variables, the first step is to find the first partials of f, one with respect to x, the other with respect to y. The second step is to solve the system df dx is equal to zero and df dy is equal to zero for x and y. And when you solve this system, usually it's, it's a system of two equations and two variables, x and y. You will get x and y. Sometimes there'll be more than one value for x, more than one value for y, and that will be used to determine the critical points. We'll see an example of that in the next slide. Let's look at this function, x cubed plus y squared minus 3x. We're going to determine all the critical points of the function. How? Well, we determine the partial of f with respect to x is 3x squared minus 3. That is just from differentiating x cubed using the power rule. The derivative of x cubed is 3x squared. And the derivative of 3x, of course, is 3. The derivative of y squared is 2y. So these are the first partials. Now we need to solve this system. We need to set the partial derivative of f with respect to x equal to 0, and the partial derivative of f with respect to y equal to 0. I notice in this case, it was nice because the partial derivative of f with respect to x is a function of x only. The partial derivative of f with respect to y is a function of y only. Now that's not always going to be the case. Sometimes this partial of f with respect to x could be a function of x and y. This partial of f with respect to y could be a partial, could be a function of x and y as well. Nevertheless, you will usually be able to solve the system. Just using algebra, the algebra you've learned, quadratic formula, and factoring. Here, if we set partial of f, partial x, equal to 0, we get x squared minus 1 is 0. That means x squared is 1, or x is plus or minus 1. That means and if we set partial f with respect to par partial y equal to 0, partial derivative of f with respect to y to be 0, we get y to be equal to 0. What does that mean? The critical points of this function are 1, 0 and negative 1, 0. Now let's go on to look at the second derivative test. Now it's important there's not really an analog like in for a function of one variable there was a first derivative test and a second derivative test. For functions of two variables you pretty much need this second derivative test. We have a critical point and we're going to find this function d of a comma b and it's only going to be evaluated at critical points. It's defined by the, part the second partial of f with respect to x squared, that's why it's called the second derivative test, evaluated at a, b, times the partial of f with respect to y, the second partial of f with respect to y, evaluated at the critical point, minus the mixed partial of f at a comma b squared. So if you're interested, what this comes from is this matrix, where we have a matrix of partials df, dx, dx squared, dx squared, y squared, df, dx, dy, 
be a derived px, and it comes from taking the determinant of this matrix. So that's just something if you're interested for a future course. But for now, what's important is that this involves all of the seven partials. Second partial with respect to x, second partial with respect to y, and the mixed partial. It's important we take the mixed partial squared. Now, what this d, this d you want to think about is really being analogous to the second derivative, the full second derivative, in functions of two, in functions of one derivative. So if this d is positive, then there's two cases. Now what this really means is that the function actually looks like either this. So it's k, d, d being positive means the function's cating inwards. Now it could be cating inwards and facing up, or it could be cating inwards and facing down. So just think of at it having the shape of a bowl around AB. And you face a bowl, turn a bowl on, on its uh, upside down, you notice that the bowl has a top that's a local maximum. If you have the bowl that's facing upwards, then the bowl has a bottom and that's a local minimum. So here now, now this is where you can notice an analogy to the case when f was a function of one variable. So d being positive, just think of this means, okay, a function is analog analogous to being concave up or concave down. Then, if the second root of f with respect to x is positive, it's concave up. The bowl is facing up. So we have a local min, or the bottom of a valley. It looks like this. If the second derivative with respect to, so this should have been x, but actually it could be y as well, because notice if d is positive, then if d is positive, the only way for this to be positive is if the second derivative with respect to x and the second derivative with respect to y, their product is larger than the mixed second derivative squared. Anything squared is always larger than or equal to zero. So if this is positive, well, this better be positive too. Otherwise, there's no way for d to be positive. It would have to be negative. So if the second partial with respect to f of f with respect to y is negative, or equivalently, the second partial of f with respect to x is negative, f has a local maximum at a, b. That means the ball is upside down and we're at the top of the hill. So here, I'm sure this looks more like a silo than a ball, but it has the same shape. If d is negative, the function doesn't have a local max or local min, but it does have what's called a saddle point. I'll draw a picture of a, you'll see a picture of a saddle point in the next slide. If d is zero, the test is inconclusive. So here's what a hilltop looks like, local max. Here's what a valley bottom looks like, local min. Here's what a saddle point looks like. So notice this looks like a horse's saddle. Here, with respect to, say, the x variable, the function is curving upwards. But with respect to the y variable, the function is curving downwards. And the fact that what's really going on here, saddle point really means that the, sec the second derivative with respect to f, uh, the second derivative of f with respect to x, and the second derivative of f with respect to y have opposite signs. Here, second derivative of f with respect to x was positive, so it's concave up. Second derivative of f with respect to y was negative, concave down. And here, if you notice what's going on here, this is a picture of Saddleback Pass. This is in Lake Louise in the Canadian Rockies. And this picture here, this is named Saddleback Pass because this, this portion of the mountain 
has the shape of a, sh of a, of a saddle. In this direction, the mountain is, the portion of the mountain is curving upwards. This portion, it's curving downwards. And that's why it's called Saddleback Pass. Let's determine local extreme of a function of two variables. Here's an example. Look at our previous function, x cubed plus y squared minus 3x. We previously computed the second, the first partial of f with respect to x was 3x squared minus 3. The first partial of f with respect to y was 2y. We found the critical points, 1, 0, and negative 1, 0. And we can compute, we can easily compute the second partial just by differentiating df dx with respect to x. Derivative of 3, or any constant is 0. Derivative of 3x squared is 6x. The second partial of f with respect to y is the same as the partial derivative of the partial derivative of f with respect to y with respect to y. We found in the previous slide the f dy was 2y. We differentiate that with respect to y to get 2. The second partial of f with respect to this mixed partial, dy dx, partial of, with respect to y of df dx, dy, 3x squared minus 3, which is equal to 0. That's because none of these terms include the variable y. If you differentiate any function of x with respect to y, you get 0. So let's just plug in chunks. Let's plug in 1, 0 to the to d. We get 6 times 1 times 2, which is 12. When we, put, we saw, okay, the mixed partial was 0. 0 squared is 0. 6 times 1 times 2 is 12. And so the second partial of f with respect to x squared is positive. That means by the second root of test, this function, x cubed plus y squared minus 3x, has a local minimum at the critical point 1, 0. So it looks like the bottom of the valley or a bowl that's facing upwards. So if this would be, if we were graphing this in three dimensions, it would be, this would correspond to the point. Let's determine negative d of negative 1, 0. The second partial of f with respect to x, this should be this thing, squared, negative 1, 0. Second partial of f with respect to y squared at negative 1, 0. It's the second partial of f with respect to y with respect to x squared, this mixed partial squared. This, of course, is 0. Mixed partial is 0. When you plug in negative 1, remember the second partial of f with respect to x was, was 6x, so 6 times negative 1. Second partial of f with respect to y was 2, so it becomes 6 times negative 1 times positive 2, which is negative 12, and that's negative. Now, we don't have to check df d squared f dx squared, or the second partial of f with respect to x, or the second partial of f with respect to y. We can just say, all right, it is a saddle point at negative 1, 0. And now, because we have a saddle point, we're good. Those are the two critical points. 1, 0 corresponding to a local minimum. Negative 1, 0 corresponding to a saddle point. And here's a graph of the function. So if you notice, this local min is what you expect at the bottom of the valley, or a bowl that's facing upwards. Now, the saddle point here, you notice here in this direction, it is curving upwards. So that actually would be in the y direction in this case, because if you noted d squared f dy squared was negative, and in the x direction, it is curving downwards. So it's concave up in the y direction and concave down in the x direction. And that mixture creates a satellite.
Okay. That's it for today's lecture. I will be posting some problems on my math lab based on these three sections of chapter seven, section 7.1, 7.2, and 7.3.